the early 90s when I was in culinary school, I had this vision of a white tablecloth restaurant. I just knew this was it. As soon as I walked in the doors, I could sit down and see the tables and see the customers walking around, seeing where the, uh, the kitchen would be and the, the action and the movement of the restaurant. Uh, and it was, it was exactly what I dreamed for. And then once we opened the restaurant in February 1999, um, our success grew quickly. Uh, we had the, all the things that I thought I desired, that I wanted in life. I had success, uh, we had wealth, we were making a lot of money, we had fame, we were on the front cover of the Wall Street Journal. And uh, that, that one thing, um, ironically, was the thing that was destroying me at the same time. For the first two years, we lived our dream. We worked and day and night in the restaurant. And I, I really connected with Bill through the whole restaurant, because that was our dream and our love of food. Um, and then we started to drift apart. It wasn't as much my dream to run the restaurant, the day-to-day -day operations. It, that was more of his dream. My dream more was to be at home with my children and, and to be a stay-at-home mom. I was taking on more responsibility at the restaurant, working in crazy hours, and my resentment with this work became more and more resentment. And with that, I, I began to go out and drink uh, to the early hours of the morning. Uh, and the drinking became um, cocaine use until the early hours of the morning, and I just just grew extremely angry. And we, we just kind of got in this vicious cycle. She would be mad at me for staying out to all these hours, and then I would be extremely mad with her uh, for not being at work and, and helping me, and she was home with our, with our baby, that it, it just it became this vicious cycle that, that was hard to break. I wanted a husband that was gonna be there for me and, and to run the restaurant and then come home and, and be the husband and the father that I knew that he could be. But it, it, it didn't turn out like that. In December 2003, I just felt extremely hopeless uh, as a father and a husband. Um, I pretty much knew that our marriage was, was finished and uh, I was finished as a father and we were getting divorced. During that month, I began to use, I mean, in, in a big, huge way. I, I spent thousands of dollars on drugs with the intent of, of ODing and to end my life. Sabre had called me and wanted me to come spend um, some time with her and the kids for, for Christmas Day. Uh, and I had to, to sleep, to, to sleep it off, and, and woke up on Christmas Eve and went to go shopping for the children, and um, the, the stores were already closed. And uh, that really put me over the edge. I began to use, and I bought a, a massive amount of crack cocaine and began, began to use heavily. And at that point, um, I intended on killing myself. That was my thoughts and, and really my goal. So I got in my car and uh, was heading to the coast um, to a vacation home that my mom and dad owned. And, I stopped at a rest area to use the restroom. And uh, when I got back out of the rest area and I got into my car, put the key in the ignition, and I began to crank the car, the key broke off. It was a big moment in my life that I truly feel that the Lord intervened because um, I was going off to, to end my life. From the beginning of opening the restaurant, one of our regular customers was Perry Noble. And he would come in one, one or two times a week, and then it became three and four times a week. And each and every time he would come in, he would ask us to come to church. And each time the answer was no. And really my thoughts were I had absolutely no desire to, to go to the church. Um, but he continued and was consistently persistent on, on asking me to go. Right around the time that I was wanting to end my life. Um, Perry left some 
CDs at the restaurant. And uh, at the time, I was living at my parents' house and uh, was commuting back and forth from Columbia uh, to Anderson um, to help with the restaurant and see the children. And uh, I decided to pick up one of these CDs, one of the messages, and, and put it in the CD in my car and uh, proceeded to listen to it. And it was a message unlike any message I'd ever heard. It was different. It was about real life, and it was about um, struggles that, that every human being goes through. And it just set off a light bulb on me, and it was something that really intrigued me. So I committed to, to go to, to New Spring and Anderson um, College the following Sunday. And, and I did, and one Sunday became two, and two became three. And uh, on my third Sunday, I was there, and uh, Perry gave uh, an invitation to, um, to receive Christ. And when he gave the invitation to stand, uh, it was like this weight pushing me back. And I could just remember just standing up and just pushing the weight away, and just, just Jesus taking over and taking control of my life. And I just, it was, uh, a moment I'll never forget. I remember just going into the parking lot after the service and sitting in my car and weeping and just, uh, and, and within the next day, a few short days, I began to pray for, for the Lord to remove the desire to drink and, and use drugs. And in a very short period of time, uh, those desires went away. It was a complete miracle. Bill started attending New Spring um, on a regular basis, and um, over a course of weeks, months, I noticed that there was a change in him, that there was a peace about him, and um, eventually there was a trust that I could feel from him, that I knew that he his focus was shifted from drugs and alcohol, and his focus was now shifted more so on his family and his responsibilities as a dad. The Lord gave me the steps that I needed to do to, to begin to earn my wife's um, respect as well as my children. And um, little by little, um, day after day, we it began to, to become stronger. And this was a, a period that, that took a, a period of a year at least of me trying to do the right thing, stepping up to be a leader of my family and taking responsibility for my actions. There was a lot of work on my end that I had to do. I had to, to be a good listener to her, a good listener to my children and uh, continue to go to church and, and do the right thing. I made a New Year's resolution to start attending New Spring. Bill had asked me a couple of times and I decided that I was gonna go and check it out. I mean, what did I have to lose? He obviously was trying to be on the straight and narrow and I wanted to see what he was experiencing. The focus was not Jesus, it was just to go and to have normalcy in my life and, and to appease Bill because I wanted to keep him on on the solid ground that he had found. But in April 11, 2010, Perry gave an invitation. I was sitting in my seat and I remember my chest pounding and pounding, get up, get up, get up. And I I don't I sat there and I, you know, ignored it, tried to ignore it as best you can. And I, I don't know what came over me. I just stood up. I stood up and I totally surrendered my life to Jesus. And I, I let him come into my heart and I, I opened myself up and I, 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 he, he took me and he has been carrying me ever since. A few weeks after I had accepted Jesus, I um, found a lump in my right breast. I didn't know what to think, I just, I kind of was a little bit in denial, you know, you just kind of, maybe it's just a swollen lift gut node. But the more I kind of started thinking about it, I was like, you know, I need to go to the doctor, obviously. So I um, went and had a biopsy. Uh, the nurse called us back and immediately she said, you need to come in and I, you and your husband need to come in. Well, I'd like to speak with y'all. And when she did say the words breast cancer, we both just kind of sat there in shock. We just couldn't really even believe it. I remember vividly one of my appointments, I had an MRI to you know pinpoint where the tumor was. Um, and as I lay in there, I just remember praying that Jesus, I, I, I need you, I need, I need 
I need you to get me through this. And um, I, I vividly, I vividly remember him grabbing my hand and saying, it's gonna be okay. And I knew from then on, I knew that there was gonna be, he was gonna be there. He's, he's my savior, he's, he's my strength. And, and there was a peace. I came out of the MRI and I, I told Bill about it and, and we just hugged each other and, and we both knew. We just, you know, we knew we can do anything because you know what, we have Jesus. I was diagnosed with um, an aggressive form of breast cancer and the tumor was larger than um, expected, so I had to have surgery to remove my right breast. That, that morning was difficult for me. As they rolled her back uh, to have surgery, I, I just, I remember being, we both cried and just uh, being scared, just kind of had these flashes of me being a single father and uh, her not coming back to me and, and kind of what I would do and how my life would be with me and three children and running a business and not having the love of my life. And it was something that I really had to struggle and pray through. I remember packing my chemo bag up and every three weeks and I would get all my snacks and all my stuff in there. And I just remember how much I dreaded it. And I remember how sweet Bill would be. Like, honey, if I could take it, I would take it for you. But I knew I had to do it. <laughs> from the chemo room, I um, would remember I'd sleep a lot, and Bill would be, what can I get you? What sounds good to you? And um, he was so sweet, and he would be like my little servant and get me up and make my bed and everything. And um, and then it would I'd feel good the next day, and then about Sunday or Monday, I would have my treatments on Friday, and about Sunday or Monday, I'd really start feeling bad, and he would clear his schedule at the restaurant just to make sure he would be with me and he was like a little mother hen watching over me. It was it was a time for me to be able to, to serve her in any way that I could and I just wanted to know, I wanted her to know that I was there for her, that I would just be there and I would just get her whatever she wanted to drink and uh, go get her something to eat, whatever she was in the mood for and just hold her hand and stroke her head and just let her know that I, you know, I loved her dearly and that, you know, I mean, th with, with Jesus working in my heart, it was just, it became so natural to me to be able to, to serve her in, in just a, a way that I, she had served me for so many years. And it was a way that enabled me to just to let her know that I was going to be there, that I wasn't going anywhere. And I loved her no matter what, with hair, without hair, uh, with a breast, without a breast. And it was something that... Uh, it was just a way that it was, in a weird way, it just drew us so close together as husband and wife. And I, I'm just so grateful that uh, the Lord moved in my heart and enabled me to be able to, to do that, to serve her in that way. Today I am cancer free and loving life. I have an awesome husband, three beautiful children, and I have hope. I'm not scared. I know tomorrow we have I'm diagnosed with cancer again. I know that through any circumstances that I can get through it because Jesus is in the center of my life. I know that Bill is the man he is today because of Christ, because Jesus took him and accepted him and gave him a second chance. What I've learned through Jesus is I once was a self-centered, coward, selfish human being, and with a relationship with Jesus Christ in my heart, uh, he enabled me to be a loving, compassionate, caring husband that I thought was never possible. Christ was working through Bill 
to take care of me in my time of need. And it's a, it's a beautiful way Jesus works. I'm very thankful for Bill, and I'm thankful for, for Jesus giving us a second chance together because I don't know where I would be without, without Jesus, first of all, but without Bill as well.